Hi everyone, welcome to Ask an Armor. My name is Kia and today I'm going to be showing you what to do when your foil has intermittent white lights. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the most common problems that I see that cause this, uh, rather than trying to explain absolutely everything that I've seen, because the common ones cover 90 to 95% of the time, and the other ones are just kind of weird and wonderful ones that you get used to looking for as well. Hi. Now, for the actual process to diagnose this, all you're going to need is the foil in question, a body cord that you know works, and a test box, something like this one. You may want to keep other tools on hand for repairs as you go along, but I'm just going to be showing you what to look for right now. Note I'm assuming that you have already isolated the issue as actually being in the foil and not anywhere else along the circuit. And once we have all that, go ahead and plug your weapon in to the test box. If you recall from my video on how a foil works, they actually have an interesting circuitry in that their base state is closed, so the light should come on if everything's working properly immediately when you plug the foil in and without the tip being, being depressed. So this is really important for us to remember as we look for the problems. Basically, you can try and think about the circuit and what would cause it to intermittently go off and look for any areas that might cause that. So as with any diagnosis that I do, I always start at the tip. This is just my method to make sure that I actually look at everything and don't potentially miss something obvious just because I was rushing and overlooked it. If that works for you, great, you can follow along in that exact way. If you have another way that works for you, you can go ahead and do this. But I'm going to start at the tip and I'm going to remove this tape. It looks like it's getting in pretty rough shape so I need to replace it anyways. And take a look at what might be underneath this. So now that the tape is all removed, the first thing I'm going to look at is to see if the barrel needs to be tightened or not. So to do this, I'm just going to take it and try twisting it gently with my fingers and see if it moves. If it does, I know I'm going to have to tighten it. And throughout all of this, I'm also going to take a look down at my test box and see if that light is holding steady or if it starts flickering on or off at me, because sometimes I might not be able to see something directly on the foil, but the box will be able to pick it up. So as a side note, if you do find you have to tighten the barrel, this, while it may solve the immediate problem of the intermittent white lights, is not a permanent solution. All you've basically done is removed the part of the barrel that is grounding against the exposed wire inside, but the fact that the insulation has been compromised in there still exists. So this problem is likely to reoccur and you'll have to rewire your blade anyways. So while yes, you may have bought yourself some time, you may be able to finish the tournament or practice, or if you're lucky, it may keep going for months at a time, but just know you will have to rewire your blade anyways at some point. So once I've checked the barrel and it doesn't feel loose and trying to twist it doesn't result in any changes on the light on my test box, I will next turn my attention to the inside of the tip. So what you would need to do for that is just undo the screws on the side and remove the tip and then you're going to want to try and clean out the interior of there, uh, both the inside of the barrel as well as probably swap around the outside of the button, the ends of the spring, etc. Uh, it's really common with the motion of the tip button for gunk, dust, sweat, etc. to get drawn into there and that can all sort of form a barrier over the contact surfaces that will interfere with the conductivity of the entire thing. So it's just a generally good practice to clean out your tip every few weeks anyways, I find, but this is one that is a really common culprit for a wide variety of issues, but in particular an intermittent white light. So once I swap that out, I'll put it all back together and again look at my test box. And what I can do is try moving it up and down, see if the light goes on and off as I expect, as well as rotate the tip button. That's another good indicator that there might be something dirty in there, is just rotating the tip without depressing it results in a change in the light on your test box. 
at this point you'll also see if you tightened your barrel if it helps or if it just broke everything and it doesn't matter that to look further you have a broken wire and you need to rewire however if you're lucky and you both had a clean barrel as well as it was tight so nothing happened it's time to move on and keep looking further down the blade so for this part you'll want really good lighting and if you have a magnifying glass or something you may want to get that out too. Basically what you're going to do is look very carefully all along the length of the groove at the wire itself. You're looking for anywhere that the insulation seems to be disturbed um, or the wire itself may be damaged. So it could be something as subtle as just a slight shine of copper through somewhere. It could be you actually see the wire has gotten popped out and exposed a bit or anything like that. If you come across one of those, you can try sort of gently touching it with a fingernail and see if that moves. If it does, that's a pretty good indicator that the wire will be shaken around as you're moving it and sometimes hit the side of the blade where it will ground out or sometimes be located in the middle and will work properly. Now sometimes they are loose to the touch, other times they won't actually feel like they're moving to your finger. In that case you can plug it into the test box and bend back and forth a little bit and see if that changes anything. Because basically that will be forcing the wire again into different positions and any breaches on the insulation should become apparent with that. So at this point, if you see anywhere along here that the copper is exposed, again, you're probably looking at just a rewire. It's pretty tricky to re-insulate wire that has become uninsulated in a permanent fashion. I mean, you could try throwing a little bit more super glue onto it, but one, that's gonna look really ugly as you just have like a blob of super glue kind of randomly sitting there, as well as it isn't guaranteed to actually wrap around the wire in a way that you need it to, and it could just make the problem worse by affixing the wire in a position where it's always grounding out. So I would recommend if you find anywhere that the wire seems to be stripped at all, you just bite the bullet and go for a rewire anyways if you have the time. If you don't, again, you can try a temporary fix of just throwing a little bit of extra glue or clear nail polish at it, but it's not the best solution. It doesn't actually last that long anyways. So the final area of interest that I look at is the connector and generally inside of the bell guard. So one thing that could be really obvious is where the wire enters the connector, see if the end of the wire has been properly cut off or if there is a bit of a tail sticking out. If that tail does exist, as the blade moves, it could be hitting either the other pin of the connector or the bell guard, something like that, and could be causing a ground. If that's the case, all you need to do is just trim that little bit of excess and that should take care of the problem. Now, if you don't see a little tail of wire, the next possibility is that it's actually the wire within the connector, and there are two possible issues that could arise here that I see pretty frequently. The first is that this uh, nut here was not actually properly tightened down all the way, therefore letting the wire sort of rattle around it rather than being a nice firm connection. And in that case, again, just general movement of using the foil will mean the wire is sometimes connecting and sometimes not. So if that's the case, all you need to do is tighten that back down again so that connection is really nice and strong again, and you should be fine. The second problem is if the wire wasn't actually fully cleaned off when it was put into the connector. So the vast majority of foil wires have two layers of insulation on them. One, the typically red or blue outer layer that's made of like a paper or a clothy material, and then an interior glue layer that is clear, which is the annoying one because it's hard to see. So if that's the case, if you're not aware of that one, uh, you just need to take the wire out and sand it down a few more times until it get, becomes really nice and brightly shiny copper. If that's the case, then it probably has everything removed from it and you can put it back and that should take care of everything. Also, again, it could have just gotten dusty, it could have gotten gunky, something could have gotten onto it, it might not be leftover glue insulation. But it was just sand the wire down and it should take care of a lot of those intermittent co connectivity issues. So after each test, what you need to do is just keep your weapon plugged back in and double check your test box. Uh, you'll want to just 
To make sure that anything's fixed, you want to depress the tip and bend it back and forth a few times, as well as do the classic wiggle the body cord in the connector and maybe whack it against a foot a few times. Really just try and put your foil through its paces and make sure that this light now stays steady the entire time. And if yes, you have successfully found and fixed the problem with your intermittent white light on the foil, and if not, you're likely looking at a rewire anyways, or it's, like I said at the beginning, one of those strange problems that appears very rarely that you're going to have to go look a little bit more closely for. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover, let me know down below. See you in the next one, bye!